Well, let's go to the female panel. No introductions needed. Conchetta Fiorelli Wells, two very smart women, and Tanya Plibersek to the budget. To you, firstly, Conchetta, what do you think? You've heard both speeches. Is the point of difference between these political political parties? I mean, is this a budget that will appeal to governments, your government's political base? Look, Alan, I think that we've seen extraordinary times and during such extraordinary times, uh, we have spent a lot of money to save lives and livelihoods. But I am very concerned uh, about the growing disquiet, about the mountain of debt and deficit that we are leaving for future generations. And that, I think, is really, for me, the biggest concern. I think so. I agree with you. Tanya, uh, former deputy leader, potential leader, if the government has spent money, as it has on addressing the virus, improving aged care, addressing childcare costs, committing itself to putting people into employment. How does the Labor Party appeal to an electorate which still remembers the tax and spend policies of Bill Shorten only a couple of years ago? Well, the government certainly has spent, uh, and Conchetta's right, they're running up close to a trillion dollars worth of debt, an extra hundred billion announced on budget night. Um, and at the heart of this budget, of uh, Josh Frydenberg's budget, is actually a, a pay cut and a tax hike for millions of working Australians. Like most of Scott Morrison's announcements, you get the big flashy headline on day one and then you read the terms and conditions, the fine print, and right there in black and white in the budget, it shows pay going backwards uh, and taxes going up for yeah, millions to be fair, of working Tanya, Australians. Tanya, so you Tanya, spend all this money and yeah. what do you get for it? I don't, I, I don't want to pull you up there, but, I, I mean, we're a bit... We're a bit uh, nitpicking here because there's a 1,080 bonus was given to workers to get them over the coronavirus. He has now restored that. And so when the tax cuts then cut in, cut in in three years' time, that 1,080 will go out. It's a bit unfair to say, therefore, that we're cutting people's wages when we withdraw the $1,080. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, that the, um, the the tax benefit for people on low and middle incomes is a temporary one, rolled over year to year, and the benefits that they're proposing for the upper end are permanent and, and locked in. I, I just think, Alan, you know, budgets are always about choices. I don't think anybody thinks things are going to be back to normal in a year's time. So people will feel it when they get $1,000 this year, but they don't get it next year. They'll feel it as a See, tax. See, I, I don't know and what... Particularly as their wages are going... To yep. flatlining, the, the budget also shows that wages are actually going backwards while the cost of living continues to go up. Housing prices, health prices, childcare, everybody knows that people are finding it harder and harder to make ends meet. This budget should have helped with that. And I know you're a big fan of infrastructure investment. This budget actually cuts $3.3 billion from infrastructure. How can that be at a time when we should be building, we should be investing for the future? Well, I've written about this today in terms of migration. If migration is going to be the source of growing the economy, we are in trouble. Can I just ask you, Conchetta, because the, the Anthony Albanese tonight couldn't help himself talking about net zero carbon dioxide emissions. Do you think people are going to rush to the polls? I can't wait to vote for Labor because they're talking about net zero carbon dioxide emissions. To be fair to Scott Morrison, and Angus Taylor, they're saying, well, that might be a good idea, but we're not going to muck up the economy to get there. Conchetta. Well, well, Alan, for me, um, carbon dioxide is plant food and it's vital for the health of this planet. It is. And we all want clean air, we all want clean water, we all want clean food, but we shouldn't be sacrificing our economy on what has now become effectively obsessive zealotry um, based on questionable modelling. And that's well, not what Australians see, want. See, Tanya, I don't know what your correspondence is telling you, but I can tell you what... I mean, people are not going to rush out to the polls to vote for a party on net zero carbon dioxide emissions, which will change temperatures, if it's going to change at all, by 0 0.4 of a degree centigrade by the year 2100. Well, Alan, you know, you and I don't agree on uh, issues around climate change, but I think we do agree on uh, the fact that Australia needs cheaper energy. And today, renewable energy from solar is the cheapest form of electricity in history. There's a reason that uh, millions of Australians have put solar panels in the... Tanya, well, the, Tanya there's only three bigger, things... More there's no, sorry, there's only three things the in energy We've policy. dispatchable energy coming online all the time. I, I agree we need dispatchable energy. Yeah. I, I agree that we need... Cheaper coal. batteries, we need can you, better You can't say coal, Tanya. You won't, Tanya, you won't choke saying coal. <laughs> well, coal, no, it's fine. Coal will be around for a while, Alan, the, but 
renewable energy is cheaper all <coughs> the time and but we are mad to turn our backs on cheaper energy. If we want to be a manufacturing but country, <laughs> if we want businesses to see their energy bills come down, then we need to embrace How extraordinary, Tanya, how energy. extraordinary that every country in the world wants our coal so that they can give that's their right. people, yeah, they uh, give their Alan, people out yeah, of poverty... Right. Out of poverty sure. for cheaper electricity. Conchetta, can I come to mm. you? You see, there's only three mm. things. I could write an energy policy in one sentence. It's <laughs> got to be available, which renewable isn't. It's got to be reliable, which renewable isn't. Renewable isn't. And it's got to be affordable. Well, mm. How do you get that out of solar and wind? I don't know. Conchetta. That's right. We need... Um, Australians uh, have relied on dependable coal-fired, um, affordable electricity. And for them, um, the uh, issue in relation to coal equates with higher electricity prices. And here we are. We are damaging our own economy. Meanwhile, uh, China is buying up our coal um, to help their economy. Well, not just China. And our economy is suffering. Not just China. Mm. See, Other economies Alan, as not well. Not just China. Uh, See, Tanya, um, Bjorn Lomborg is a world authority. World authority on this Alan, and acknowledged as such. Hang on, let me tell you. He said, quote, the current Paris Agreement will force more people into poverty by 2030 than otherwise would have happened to reduce warming by 2100 by 0 0.4 of a degree. Tanya, China are laughing. They're promising net zero emissions by 2060, mm. 10 years after the rest so of the world go broke by inflicting irreversible damage on their economies. China will rule supreme. I mean, how does that make sense? You know what, Alan, of, of all those people who've put solar panels on the roof, some care about climate change, some don't. They all want cheaper electricity. Mm. There's a reason that the Business Council of Australia, the National Farmers Federation, um, Qantas, uh, yeah. West Farmers, all these big companies, including our energy companies, are embracing newer renewables because oh. they are cheaper. And they... Yeah, they're embracing renewables with because our governments with are hydro, so stupid. With hydrogen, with biofuels... Tanya, the test will be... Things. test will be, <laughs> well, don't give them subsidies. Agree, we, Alan? Now, Tanya, don't give them subsidies right. and see whether companies are prepared to invest in renewables. They've been subsidised to the tune of billions of dollars. Conchetta, I don't want to persist, but I want to ask you this. We're told to this of the it's experts... It's interesting Long there's new subsidies said, in the budget for coal and gas, isn't there? I mean, there's new gas subsidies in this budget. Just come back to Lomborg, who said that making economies okay. carbon neutral by 2050, this is Lomborg, will cost on average 16% of GDP. That's $5 trillion a year for America, $224 billion a year for Australia. How does this make sense, Conchetta? Well, it doesn't, Alan, and in the end, as I said earlier, we don't want to sacrifice our economy uh, and uh, our ability to progress on the basis of what have been proven to be questionable modelling.